Hi, I've uh, recently been back to England where we did some impromptu filming. It was very quickly put together and we didn't have our normal equipment. So please forgive the sound quality, but we thought you would find these films interesting. Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Here we are in the heart of England, Warwickshire, with my son Josh dressed as the man at arms and Steve here as a common billman. Because he's not wearing any armor other than his helmet, he is known as naked, yeah? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some of the pole arms and side arms that these men would have actually worn. Now both of these are members of the Oxford household, the reenactment group for the Wars of the Roses. So let's move on. Silence, Steve. What is this weapon here? This one is a battle axe. Simply that, yeah? It does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? Yeah. It's got an axe for cleaving. It's also got a reverse pluke for puncturing in to armour. Ow. Okay. Is that too much? No, that's perfect. So, I know this one. Yeah, that's the pole axe, isn't it? This is a pole axe. Again, it has an axe for cleaving. It has what looks like a meat tenderizer for denting and uh, breaking the lames on his on the opponent's armour so he can't move so well. And it also has a small spike for getting into under these arms and places like that. Just to let you folks know, these have all been blunted because they are all used in reenactment. So we don't want anybody being hurt. Yeah. Now this one here, that's a real nasty piece. I know it's a kind of a hammer. What kind of hammer is it? This is a lucerne hammer. Again, the same as the pole axe. It has the uh, spike for cleaving in, but it's also got four other spikes on the opposite side for clanging into the armor and denting the armor, as well as a spike for thrusting into the vulnerable spots. They're quite meaty weapons for sure, aren't they? Quite, uh, quite something. Okay, and the next one, I know it's a simple spear, isn't it? Yes, what the Welsh are known for, more than anything, it has a good range and it looks, all it is, is we're aiming for his vulnerable spots. Yeah. I was reading about the, the Welsh hoblars who uh, rode their, if you like, their Welsh ponies into battle uh, using their spears. And they were the forerunners, so they say, of the mounted infantrymen who rode into battle, got off his horse and then engaged on foot, either as a spearman, hoblar or as a, as a bowman. Now, I'm not familiar with this piece here. I, I don't think I've ever seen one. So, Steve, if you could explain, what on earth is this? This is a cutter de breche. Cutter de breche. Cutter de breche. It's very heavy and awkward to use. It has got a spike and it's also got a trapping. For if he advances, I can trap him. Oh, my goodness. Wow, so that literally traps him, stops him dead, and the man next to you, well, I've never seen one of those. It also, all that is sharpened for the hack. Wow. Gosh, I can imagine you working in teams through that. I recognize this, this is a simple glaive, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, just used for stabbing almost like a, a sword on a stick. Yeah, give us a show, Steve. Again, it would have one long edge and a reverse spike point there. Again, we're looking for these vulnerable spots. I like going for those vulnerable spots. As a bowman, I am quite an expert of <laughs> going for the vulnerable spots. But it also has a sharpened edge, which to a man in tin, is not gonna do. A lot. But to know that unarmed man, it's going to slice him to pieces, isn't it? Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh, I never touched you. So this one's the English bill, yeah, and you can see that uh, it's almost like farming implements that have been forged together. And this one is uh, the Italian bill, I understand. Can you demonstrate the Italian bill for yes, us? Yes, and we're going to arm Josh with his pole axe so he can actually defend himself just a little bit. I'm going to step back. Right, let's see these two in 
action. So off they go. Ow, up the armpit. Ow. See, the bill outreaches him. Ouch. Yeah, he's just hooked the back of the leg. That'll fetch the man down. So we've seen the pole arms, now some of the side arms. I've got here what's called a rondel dagger because of the shape of the handle. But this particular one, it's a three-sided blade. And these are awful. They are designed to get up through the armpit and through into the chest and the lungs. The other thing about these is a triangular cut. They're very, very hard to stitch from the inside out. This is a nasty piece of work. But now we have, once again, a bollock knife, but this is a pick, what I call a pick, where it's solid on one side, razor sharp on the other. These are all copies of originals, same as the pole arms, they're all copies of ones that are kept in armories. And we're gonna have a little look at some of the swords. So this is a favorite of mine, it now belongs to Josh, my son. It used to be mine. This is a, a bastard sword, but in the scabbard, you have an eating knife and a pricker. Yeah, just a, a bit of fine detail there. The blade, it's a live blade. It's slender. It's not too heavy. In fact, this weighs a little over two pound. But it's halfway between a great sword and a common sword. So it had the name, the bastard sword. A handy piece of kit. Now we have a common sword here. This is what a man at arms would wear when he's going into battle. And then a cinquida, five fingered. It's an Italian heavy slashing, uh, quite an unusual weapon really, but uh, just one of those quirky types that you'd find on the battlefield. And then this one, it's a German uh, piece, a Messer Falchion. Uh, chopping, anybody who saw my archers video will see what a falchion is like for slicing. Quite a handy weapon to have. And then here, you can see how this hanger, as they call it, the swords are developing because it has a catcher for the enemy blade that you can turn. It has a knuckle guard. So the actual shape of the swords come towards the roses, towards the end of the War of the Roses, are beginning to change more and more into the swords that you recognize later on in the 16th and 17th century. So now before I go, I want to show you something. I'm going to stand up now because I don't think many of you are aware. I'm going to show you the other half of my crew. There she is, my wife, Julie. That is all we are, the history squad. is Julie, my wife, and myself. So thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed our little video. If you did, like, share, subscribe. And I've got some Patreon members that I'm gonna call out. Here we are, Ian Tomlinson. Thanks, mate. Marco Engelbrecht, and make sure I pronounce that right. And Daryl and Erin Pratt and their children, Ethan and CJ. Listen guys, thank you so much. Bye for now.